thousand years in advance of us, and that they even frequently visit Earth. Apparently, these were descendants of people who, after the great explosion and war of Atlantis, had uh, kind of exited and taken up life there. Uh, they had not advanced very rapidly. They weren't far in advance of us. They were on kind of on the beginning stages uh, of development of space travel. Their ships did not have the ability to jump into hyperspace. So consequently, they had space stations out in free space. It took them quite some time to get here to Earth. One of their problems is, and by the way, uh, Billy said he calls this planet Akart, A-K-A-R-T. Uh, one of the um, situations is that they frequently come here for food. Their planet, or at least one of them anyway, uh, Ptah says is overpopulated and has 23 billion people on it. We have 5 billion right now. So they have about five times as many people as we do. And he says their problem is that uh, like us, they become greatly overpopulated. We're too, we have too many people uh, for the food chain. We're putting too much stress on the planet as it is. There's plenty of space for everybody, but when you have this many people, it puts tremendous stress on the social system, which ours is rather poor, it's all based on money, greed, and power. So the more people you have, the tougher it is to control the system. We still have a system of economics, which is not designed for the general welfare. It's designed for the general welfare to keep them in line and to feed the rich people who designed the system. So in that respect, we're also overpopulated. And of course, the food chain. Already we're into genetically engineering foods and so forth. Uh, and of course, we affect nature because we're out of control with our technology. Well, this planet has 23 billion people on it, five times almost the population of the planet Earth. And they're coming here regularly for food. Uh, Pata mentioned that most of the time when they come here, their ships are seen from time to time, pictures are taken of them. But they don't take our food, they generally take seeds and uh, plants and so forth back to their world and, and grow them and grow their own food and so forth. Apparently they're a very kind, peaceful race, uh, and uh, they're not warlike at all. We have nothing to fear from them, and we probably will have no open contact with them for quite some period of time. This led into an explanation. Ptah was saying that uh, probably around the year 2000, it's quite possible that we will probably have open contact with another race. He says that this, when this uh, comes about, that this race that's coming here will be human similar to us. They'll look a little different. And that they will broadcast across space to the planet Earth that they're coming. There'll be a lot of pandemony. There'll be a lot of fear. There'll be a lot of panic. But it won't be uh, justified because they'll actually, when they get here, turn out to be a very peaceful race. Uh, no problems for us really at all, except that we're going to have to wake up to the fact that there really are ETs out there. Their ship will be very large egg-shaped, not a dish-shaped like uh, the UFOs were used to seeing, but it'll be a very, very large ship and it'll look like an egg. And Billy asks, uh, well, where's it going to land? Who are they going to contact? And Ptah says, well, uh, the natural place is America. And Billy says, America? Why always America? What's this thing with everything happening in America? And Ptah says, well, America is the most logical place. One, because of the government, and the other is the fact that they will be concerned about their arrival causing panic on the planet, and that the American people are more open, more willing to accept UFOs, and by the time that time period gets here, remember we're speaking now in 75, so it'll be 25 years, he says, by the time that happens, the American people will be greatly opened up to the idea of extraterrestrial contact, and there's far less chance of panic in America compared to other countries. Well, before they end here, before they drop Billy off, Billy, uh, one more time, is pressed by Ptah that, uh, to go out and do public speaking and to get this information out that they've been uh, watching Billy, and even though Billy has been saying all along that he's going to do this, that he's writing, going to write lectures, and he's going to go out and talk, he still has not done it. And Billy keeps saying he's just not good at it. He, he does not want to do the public speaking thing, and that he's trying to get uh, Hans Jacob, uh, his friend, to do that. And Pata's in, in agreement with that. Okay, Billy, if you really can't do the public speaking, then work with Hans. But it's not happening. So Billy's pressured one more time to, uh, uh, again, get out and do public speaking, which he has not done so far. Okay, Billy's returned to Earth, and a little time goes by before the uh, next contact. The next, uh, There were a couple of short contacts telepathically. 
uh, actually what happened for about the next month was that transmissions were sent to him by Ascot, uh, who he has just uh, uh, reconnected with out in space, to help him get all of his notes together about his contacts in the 50s and 60s. And they are so extensive that I'm going to devote the next tape to that, so I'm going to kind of skip by that part right now and go on a little bit uh, with Billy's other contacts here and finish this tape up, and then the next tape will devote to Billy's um, travels with Ascot and so forth. So we're going to jump ahead to September 12th in 1975 for Billy's 33rd contact. This one was kind of interesting because when Semyasi arrived, Billy had some things to tell her. He says that he had just witnessed the night before uh, a beam ship of some type was hovering around the house, and he'd seen it on several occasions in the general area. And he couldn't make any mental contact with it. It didn't seem to be Pleiadian, but he couldn't understand who it was. Simyasi remarked to him, well, these are the ships of the Bafath people that we'd mentioned earlier, that uh, she was quite sure that they were watching Billy, probably planning on even kidnapping him. And Billy was a little surprised. He says, they would kidnap me. And she says, yes, uh, that they, had, they knew that uh, Billy was being contacted. They knew that he was being helped to be the prophet of our time, that they were having a lot of extensive contacts with him, that he was learning a lot of information. And this was directly going against their mission of controlling the planet. They really didn't want somebody coming along and telling the truth and helping organize people that this was not in their best interest, so she was quite sure that they were probably up to no good and probably going to try to kidnap him, and suggested to Billy that he'd be very careful around them, uh, and not to, if they sent him any telepathic uh, information, uh, to come out or have a contact with him, to not do that, because he could uh, probably would never be heard from again. That it was, it was generally... Um, uh, their normal uh, M.O. to like attract people to the ships, telling them that they were in touch with God or that they were in touch with Jesus, whatever, and that uh, they were gods and so forth, and they were sent here on behalf of a god. That was their general mode of operation, that the earth people were very susceptible to that, that they could be drawn into their ships quite easily uh, and drawn into their control very easily by telling earth people that they were somehow here on behalf of some god or on behalf of Jesus. And the people were, many people, especially the Christians, were quite prone to believing that, wanting to believe it, and this would allow the Bafath actually to control them and build up their own followers here on earth. Well, after that was explained to him, Billy says, well, um, uh, a friend of his named uh, uh, Jacob had received a letter from some other man who claimed that he'd been in touch with a being from Alpha Centauri some time back. And the man had gone to the trouble of describing all about these contacts and this being from Alpha Centauri, and Billy wanted to know if it was true. And Simeasi says, yes, it is. We're aware of these contacts, and we know of this man. He's one of the genuine contactees, but they didn't give his name, and the name wasn't in the letter. She did say it was true that the being was from Alpha Centauri, and that his name was... Uh, excuse me, spelled S-E-F-H, Seth, it's kind of like Spath and all these other names you're hearing. Quite Most of these names I don't think are very accurate, either the names of the people or the names of the planet. I think they're mostly just labels given to us by the Pleiadians for reference, or their names that Billy uses and so forth, whatever, uh, just to label things. That uh, So we're not real sure about these actual names. But it says this being from Alpha Centauri was here for 11 months. Uh, and that it was some time back, it was before 1975, before Billy's contacts had actually started with the Pleiadians. But this man had written to Billy uh, through Jacob because um, the being from Alpha Centauri, which who understood how to look in, into the future and see things, told the man during his 11 months of contacts that there would be contacts between the Pleiadian race and Billy starting at this time. And that's why the man had written. His contacts were actually over and had been discontinued. Apparently what had happened, the being from Alpha Centauri, seeing the problems on planet also, much like the Pleiadians had, had decided to try to help out and feed information into our society also through this gentleman, spent some time educating him, much like Semyasi had been educating Billy, 
but the man decided not to come forward, pretty much like Billy had. Billy didn't want to come forward either into the public arena. This man had decided that he would not do it, and so the contact stopped, and the bean from Alpha Centauri gave up the idea and returned home. But the contacts were real. Billy right away wanted to know who this guy was. And Simyasi remarked, no, that it would not be uh, fair for us to tell you who this man is because uh, he's already made his own decision to be private and they respect that. Well, and uh, Billy said that he would, how about if he just went to meet him? And she again remarked that no, he'd made the decision of his own free will now to not come out into the public arena any longer and they were going to respect that. We're all on our own path of evolution and they were not going to violate that. Well, Billy had received some information from another UFO group from Berlin, and these people were followers of something called the Ashtar Command, and he wanted to know about this. and wanted to know if Simyasi had any information about this Ashtar Command outside of Berlin. And Simyasi says, well, we have some information, but not too much. We've been looking into our, ourselves, and they really didn't know much about it. And Billy says, well, come on, surely you know something. She says, well, all we know so far is that these people in Berlin are part of what's called the Thule Society, T-H-U-L-E. And this is a very old society that has done a lot of damage on the planet. The Thule Society itself are Earth people, but they are influenced by, by some outside extraterrestrial force. And the Pleiadians have been trying to figure out where this was coming from. They've been trying to figure out where the thoughts were coming from. They had searched our planet, a parallel planet, other dimensions, and quizzed other life uh, forms that were coming here and could not figure out exactly where the source of these uh, mental images were coming from that was controlling this Thule society in Berlin. But she says it dates back a long ways because the Thule society was part, uh, well actually they were the people that were involved in controlling Hitler. They were one of the main reasons where Hitler took the wrong path with uh, his changing of the world that he was intent upon and went the way that he did and kind of fell to the dark side of things. But uh, they'd been trying to trace these energies and could not really do it so far. All they could tell was that the thoughts were coming directly into Germany, into this Thule society, and that they were trying to find out the source of it. And if they did, they'd sure let Billy know more a little bit about it. Ashtar was somehow connected with this, but they really hadn't figured out who this Ashtar person was. In my magazine I used to put out, I had a section I called the Mysteries of Earth, because there are a lot of unexplained mysteries like the Pyramids, the Bermuda Triangle, Easter Island, things like this, that uh, traces of unusual things that have happened on our planet that we really don't have any explanation of. Well, quite often Billy would ask questions about them, and most of all those mysteries have been explained at one point or the other. I'm just going to go over one or two of them here on the tape. Uh, the Great Pyramid, by the way, which we'll find out later on, was actually built by the Fath uh, 75,000 years back. But right now I want to talk a little bit about the Bermuda Triangle because its cause and its origin are really quite unusual. The Bermuda Triangle, we've all heard these unusual stories about ships disappearing, boats, airplanes, people, and so forth. A lot of strange phenomena over the past several hundred years. Well, <clears throat> Simyasi remarked that, yes, it's true, there has been a lot of disappearances. To begin with, she says it has nothing to do with the devil. Uh, many people are mistakenly relating, mistakenly relating the events in the Bermuda Triangle to Satan uh, or something. She says that's not true. To begin with, there is no, is no such person actually as Satan. There is no devil. This is just a man-made concept. It's something created out of Christianity to create fear out of control. That there really isn't any devil. There is, of course, good and bad, moral and immoral and so forth throughout the uh, universe. And there are, of course, good people, good aliens, and bad ones, so forth. So uh, good and bad does exist, but there is no actual devil doing something to the people of uh, you know, the Christian world. So you can't blame it on that. She says some of the events of the Bermuda Triangle are caused by our own people. That there was for a time period a band of pirates who having heard about the mysterious things in the Bermuda Triangle seized the opportunity to hide in the cargo of many different ships 
when the ship would sail into that area, they would come on board, uh, kill all of the uh, people on board, and disappear with the goods, and people would just think it was some mysterious thing. And they got away with it that for a long period of time. But that certainly was not responsible.